let's try let's try him the ideal thing is to have a nice split down there and run it straight down the middle to so get two uniform halves sometimes it needs some real brute force to physically cut through the knot all right it's encouraging we need to get it into the cleaving break which just helps us control the split if it's not going to behave itself Now what's happening, it's tending to split off up to the top, so what we do is we turn it over, fat side down, push it forward a bit. We can then apply pressure on this lower timber and that will hopefully then correct the split so it starts to go back down, down that way. Right, not the cleanest of splits I've done before. Always take the bark off, off chestnut. It can encourage um, wood boring insects, bark borer beetle, which isn't going to do anything structural to the timber, but it's more, more cosmetic. This is my side axe, it allows to clean the timber off um, quite, quite easily. Clean some of the knots off like that, because trying to clean them off with a, a draw knife is a bit too much like hard work. Just trim them back a bit. What starts off looking quite a rough bit of timber can end up looking quite, quite respectable with a little bit of uh, not too much work. This is the draw knife here. Well, I actually had this as a child hanging up in my bedroom wall because I just loved old tools a good few years ago now and uh, it's, 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 it's great because it's, it's sharpened so well, holds, holds the edge really well. Sometimes I'll peel the bark off before I split the timber, reason being that the bark can sometimes hide where the split's going. If you've got two hands on a draw knife, you can do very little damage to your fingers. I mean, the, the classic thing is you take the tool away and then you start swinging this around and your thumb gets in the way. So it's just keep, keep your hands away, other people out the way as well. A couple other tools I use for peeling the bark. It's called a rinding knife. You can get dual generous removals of, of bark. Another one here I've got, which is a slightly smaller one, which is great for the smaller diameter poles. And again, it does the same principle, it just takes the bark off. Um, so you can use anything, you use a pen knife, you use a side axe to take the bark off. But the beauty of the draw knife, of course, is that you can just cut through the knots. Having removed them, the big ones with the side axe, you can, with a little bit of effort, just trim over. The next process will be to cut it to length uh, and then also clean the, the cleft face up as well, because obviously you've got a few marks where the throw has been, it's cut into the, in, into the timber. I always had an interest in the traditional rural crafts and skills. I had a taste today on green woodworking, that was it, I was hooked. I've been doing this now for four years and uh, haven't been signed off with stress unlike my last job. Meet lovely people, get to work in some lovely gardens and working with this lovely wood as well. I work purely in sweet chestnut because it's very durable because it's got a high tanning content and a low sapwood content. You're looking at the heartwood here, this is the solid part of the, the timber and the sapwood is just literally probably a few millimetres each side running up there. Now if you've got a tantalised pole from a builder's merchants or whatever you'd find that there's a little bit of heartwood in the middle, lots of sapwood and all that's being treated with chemicals. You don't need to treat this with chemicals, you just leave it, it'll weather to a natural silver, silver grey colour. Basically I would then cut this to length uh, and then I clean it up a bit more ready for, for what I want to use it for. And, and just square it up very slightly. I mean I don't want to have it perfectly square but it takes it from being just a half round bit of timber to something that looks a little bit more finished off. Most of the chestnuts grown in Kent and Sussex area. Uh, there is, um, or there are pockets elsewhere, Devon, Cornwall, uh, Herefordshire, Northamptonshire, smaller pockets. Uh, and then you get odd little odd little clumps of odd trees here and there but on a commercial basis it's certainly Kent and Sussex is the name for for sweet chestnut. I mean I'm not a copper I just work with the wood the guys out there have felled and delivered to me or I've collected from them but the wildlife benefits I mean flowers they suddenly become rejuvenated they suddenly appear after dormancy when trees have been felled things are growing up again. Um, they fell the coppice timber October through to March April time uh, or depending upon the sap rising etc in, in the springtime. Uh, so I can buy stuff probably up say October this year that might have been felled October last year. 
Uh, if it's got the bark on, it's kept out of direct light, it, it stays green for some time. Um, as soon as it starts drying out too much, it does become harder to work. Uh, and you're then, you know, you're constantly sharpening your blades, your uh, draw knife, etc. So um, I don't buy more than I can use within three or four months, I suppose. Uh, I just buy enough chestnut for, for three or four big jobs. Get a big, big, you know, big trailer lined up and fill it up with chestnut. It's a very, very worker-friendly, user-friendly uh, wood. These will be cut down into about 900 mil lengths. You know, a few curves and a few bends and wobbles and things, but uh, I'm not worried about what the timber does in the middle too much, uh, as long as it's fairly uniform at each end to get a, a decent fixing. Uh, always use galvanised fixings or stainless steel fixings with uh, chestnut because of the high tanning content. Otherwise, if you use ordinary nails, you get these lovely rust marks appearing down the side. It will weather down, obviously you will lose this newness that you've got here at the moment. Occasionally you split a bit of timber and think, oh, I'm never going to use that. But sure enough, you do. A few months later, you've got a job. And uh, because it's, it's, it's curved, it's got some interesting features to it. I think, right, I can, I can use it on that particular, particular job. Once you start making something, you're, you're totally in the zone. I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you speak to anybody who does green woodworking with a spoon carving, uh, carving bowls, pole lathe turning. Once you're there, you're concentrating so much on it, you forget everything. And it is, it's a real stress buster. And I can see why people just say, forget the high life, the big money, the firm's car, the petrol, pension. Let's just live a simple, easier life. Not so much money, but satisfaction is, is, is definitely there. Yeah, you get a lot, lot more job satisfaction. It's definitely a good way of switching off. Keeps you fit as well. <laughs> no more office belly have I got. <laughs>